Hello, John Zimmerman, and in this video, I want to talk about three ways you can increase your homeschooler's math retention. So let's go ahead and get started with the first way, and that is note-taking. I think a lot of people out there, a lot of parents you know, probably already know that note-taking is important, but probably don't know um, how important it is in terms of retention. See, when you're taking notes, it's really going to force your child to... Um, transfer information. They're going to be focused on transferring what they're seeing down onto their paper. And that, that physical focus there is really going to help their, their mind uh, absorb what's going on. So note-taking is an excellent activity and a necessary activity during um, learning that is going to keep the mind focused. All right, and you can see here in our second bullet, it also involves all the senses, okay? It's very, very rich um, in terms of all the learning styles. So it's visual, it's a visual activity. It's auditory, so you're seeing what's going on, you're listening, and then it's kinesthetic, you're, you're writing. So depending on how your child likes to learn, whether it's visual, auditory, kinesthetic, their learning style, all of these are gonna be coming into play when you're um, actually taking notes. That's why I think a lot of people you know, a lot of students sometimes will say, well, I just want to sit and watch something or listen to the teacher. That's not a good idea because just trying to learn uh, by listening and seeing is like the worst way to retain. Okay, so note-taking forces that focus and it also gets those other senses involved. Um, our third bullet here is it organizes your thoughts. So hopefully you got a good teacher and the material is um, being presented in a logical, organized, uh, sequential manner. But if it is... It's going to force the, the student, your, your homeschooler there, to be taking notes in, in, in an organized, logical way. So not only are they listening and focused on the information, it's going to be organizing what they're learning into uh, main topics, subtopics, procedures, etc. So really, really critical um, that you're, you're watching how, um, however your child's learning homeschooling, how the material is being presented to them, because what they're going to be seeing uh, through the... Uh, their lessons is how they're going to probably more likely going to be writing it in their notes. So you good good um, way to judge a particular curriculum for your child is how well they're be, they're able to take notes from it. And then um, our last bullet here about note taking is if you have great notes, if your child has great notes, it's an excellent reference for review. And I can tell you, after years and years of teaching uh, math, those students that had great notes were almost always my top students. So uh, if you're looking for a good leading indicator on you know, how well your child's going to do, look at their notes. You should be reviewing their notes, and you should also force them to review their notes and, and fix them up. You know, if they said, well, you know, these notes are kind of sloppy. I could have done better. Well, have them, you know... Um, uh, go back and improve them. That act is going to tremendously increase their retention. So let's go and take a look at our next thing, how to increase your child's retention, your homeschooler's retention, and that's called teach back. Now, teach back is basically what it sounds like. It's going to um, be an activity where you're going to have your child uh, teach you, okay? And it's going to force your child to explain what they know. So, for example, let's say you're working on fractions. You can say, well, listen, uh, Julie, why don't you teach me how I add these two fractions? So it's going to put them in a position where they have to really show what they uh, what they know. And it's going to force them to access their, their memory, their short-term memory, their long-term memory. And if your child is able to really teach something well back to you or to another student, that's really a, a, the, the highest order um, uh, way for you to determine if they mastered something. Okay, so true mastery comes when you're able to, to teach it to somebody. So that's a great way to really indicate um, um, how well they know something, how well they're able to retain. Also, when you have your child teach back to you as far as the retention goes, you know, if they're having trouble remembering something, you can identify weak areas. So you can say, well, you know, why don't you refer back to your notes if you if you don't quite remember, um, you know, how to explain this particular, you know, uh, part of the problem solving process. So it's a great way to have them kind of like, you know, be aware of what they're weak in. You know, this oftentimes we're, we're not really aware of what we know and don't know until we try to teach it. So you really want to try this. You can try it with yourself. You'll say, well, you know, I know how to, I know how to teach my kid, um, say, how to add decimals because, you know, logically it might seem kind of easy to you, but until you have to actually teach it, you'll see that it's a, it's a pretty challenging activity. And then lastly, 
teach back will give your uh, your homeschooler instant feedback. So um, as they're you know able to you know teach something to you, if they're if they're confident, they understand, they'll get instant feedback on how well they are doing uh, with this particular skill, and they'll know. They'll you'll you'll be able to see it if they're able to teach you, for example, how to find a percent of a number, and they're just you know teaching you in a great confident logical manner they're getting that instant feedback hey i know this likewise if they're kind of struggling and they're kind of questioning you'll get that instant feedback that you want to go back and uh, review all right let's take a look at our last thing to help your homeschooler increase their retention and that is spot review this is kind of the good old-fashioned uh pop quizzes and they do have a lot of value the thing with pop quizzes is you don't want to give them right after the lesson, not even a day after the uh, lesson. Let's go back to our percent example. Let's say you taught your uh, homeschooler percent and you say, well, the next day you're going to give them a, a pop quiz on percent. Uh, it's not really, that's not really that effective because it's going to be in our short term memory. So you want to wait a few days to kind of throw in a little pop quiz here and there. And the next um, bullet I, ha I have here is don't overdo it. When you're doing a spot quiz or a pop quiz, don't give um, your child a, a ton of questions to do. One or two is just fine. What you want to do is just in, you want to tap into uh, their retention. How well are they remembering? So one or two questions is all you need. And they don't even have to be that challenging. As long as it's uh, they're challenging enough to see if they remember what they learned a few days ago, that's all you need. There's a um, I think a lot of misunderstanding how much practice uh, you need to review practice you need to give your your child and there's an old saying that we have in teaching it's called drill and kill it's like well hey let's just keep your your uh, students or child busy by giving them a thousand problems on fractions you know you know that's going to do two things one it's going to burn your child out with math they're going to end up hating math if you're going to be doing that many problems and two it's not a, an effective use of the time okay you don't have to overdo it when we're talking about review um, the last thing or or third bullet excuse me here is um, when you do uh, these pop quizzes, you want to correct errors. So if, uh, let's say, for example, let's go back to our percent uh, example. Um, your child makes a, a mistake, you know, and you're like, well, you know, I got this wrong. Well, you don't want to just kind of leave it there. You want to kind of rectify it. And that's why you don't want to overdo it. One or two problems is enough. So you want to have them go back and access their notes. You know, you don't want to step in and, and do the correction for them. You want to have them kind of self-correct. So have them go back and refer to the notes and, you know, kind of think about it. And then maybe even explain, you know, what went wrong in a problem and how they correct it. All these activities is excellent, excellent for retention. And then lastly here, um, you should always keep in mind that good grades don't always equal good retention. Okay. So let's say your your homeschooler did great on a particular chapter test or a quiz, you, you shouldn't feel overly confident that in two three months that they're going to you know uh, be able to you know to access that information. That's why you want to have this kind of um, you know little spot review kind of going and built into your activities. So your curriculum that you're using may or may not have that. So it's going to be up to you, the homeschooling uh, uh, parent. To take on uh, to take on this, and that's why I'm doing this video um, to you know kind of give you some things that may you may not find in um, uh, curriculums on on what you need to do for your child. So let's go ahead and wrap this up. So in review, you can definitely increase your child's retention, and it's it's critical when it comes to to mathematics that you're you're focused on what are they what is my child remembering. So uh, remember, note taking improve the quality of your child's note taking. Okay, have them you know, um, step up their standards and your standards as far as what you will accept. So uh, note your day-to-day note-taking activity, it's a, it's a great leading indicator on how well your child is going to do in math, is how well their notes are. Uh, the second thing is look for opportunities to have your, your child teach you back. That doesn't have to be every day, but maybe like once or twice a week. Um, have them teach you a problem, have them teach you something, and you know, or maybe summarize a lesson. But they should be in, always be put in a position where they're constantly having to uh, to teach. And then lastly, you want to you want to add in a lot of frequent and random pop quizzes. Okay, you don't. Um, and I say frequent here, so you want to be doing a lot of pop quizzes, but you don't want to um, overdo it as far as uh, 
how many questions you give. One or two questions is fine in random. What I mean by that is that, you know, um, uh, you know, if you covered a topic three months ago or four months ago, you want to add in a question here and there. Just kind of keep your, your child off guard. Well, listen, I hope you enjoyed and uh, learned something from the video. Please come on over to Homeschool Math Online. It's my blog. I have a ton of uh, great uh, math video lessons there that you definitely can, um, um, you know, have your child watch, you know, as a supplement or as a main part of your homeschooling day. So, with that said, thanks for watching. Have a great day.